Hello, good people, and welcome. Today, I am going to tell you three ways to find your voice as a Black woman in a world full of just toxic thinking and not being very supportive and loving of us as Black women and celebrating us in a very exploitive way, sometimes we can get lost in finding ourselves in this journey called life related to how people see us in this world. And so I wanted to give you three ways that you can find your voice as a Black woman and um, I hope they're helpful. All right, the first one is really simple. Acknowledge that you have a very unique and special story in this world that we live in and be unapologetic about that. It's okay for you to be special, unique, and to acknowledge that because it is a part of your experience as a black woman here in this country. Um, acknowledge that your story includes your mind, your body, your spirit, your being, and not just your negative experiences, but your good experiences. And I want you to honor those experiences in a way that says that I accept that I'm human, I accept that I'm not perfect, and although I'm not perfect, I am divinely made and the creator of good things in this world. And many people mimic the stories that we actually have to experience every day. And so I want you to just start with being unapologetic about being a black woman and being okay with accepting that your unique story under that role or title is your story to be celebrated and to be honored. So that's number one. Be unapologetic about being unique and special because I absolutely love you. Um, cultivate your, number two, I want you to cultivate your ability to be still with you. So I work um, as a therapist with a lot of people who have um, different forms of anxiety um, and or don't even realize that they're experiencing anxiety because they're constantly worrying about what people think about them, how the world sees them. And what I want you to do is try to learn uh, techniques and ways to be still and acknowledge the world around you. So what makes you tick? What makes you feel good? What makes you not feel good? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? What makes you feel anger and hurt? Now, a lot of people are struggle with emotions because we've been taught that they're this negative thing. But I want you to listen to your emotions during this time of stillness so that you really truly can acknowledge the world around you and how you navigate it. And what you're doing here is you're actually listening to your emotions and allowing your body and your spirit to know that it's okay to feel, it's okay to have emotions, and it's okay for us to see them as not the bad guy because emotions are not our enemies. It's how we deal with those emotions and how we acknowledge those emotions that actually impact our lives, but they are not our enemies. So know that they are your truth and you have to be the one to learn to navigate them and to be able to be still and acknowledge the world that you live in and is around you. So no more making emotions the bad guy. It is okay to be angry. It is okay to be hurt. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be happy. And it's okay to be accepting of yourself and making sure that you actually acknowledge them and honor them for what they are, but don't stay in them. And I'm hoping that by now you've seen a few videos on how to deal with some emotions here on the channel and you, um, what I'll do is I'll try to link some that really are specific to really honoring emotions and I'll either link them in the video or I'll put them down in the description because I really feel like it's important for us to know that emotions are not are bad are not bad guys it's okay all right so and last but definitely definitely not least and I would actually probably argue one of the most important factors in most of our health is surround yourself with those who respect you, honor you, and believe in you, right? So when I mean respect, I mean they actually not only just respect you in a sense that say, well, whatever you want to do, you do it, and I'm going to support it, but they acknowledge the good and the bad that might be you might may be experiencing, and they respect you enough to confront you in a way that's gentle and kind and respectful of their role, but they also they believe in you. They know that you're capable of doing things. They know that you are going to have your dreams if you work at them. And they believe that if you want it, you can have it.
You want to surround yourself with teachers, mentors. Um, and as black women, I think one of the best traits about us is that we are encouragers. We are nurturers and not in the, um, the traditional sense of nurturing because we're female, but because of our relationships and how we encourage each other, we inspire, motivate, we we keep each other up. And so surrounding yourself with the right people allows for you to feel supported and to have your dreams. And then that voice, that story, that that journey that you want to take as a black woman, regardless of it's having a family, if it's um, becoming a, a motivational speaker, being a business owner, if it's being um, if it's actually planting your own seeds around the world in terms of being unique and traveling. It, it can be anything, but these three factors will help you to find a way to have your voice as a black woman. And it doesn't have to be exactly as anyone else, even as our sisters, right? So we each have our own voice, our own story, and it is okay to honor it, to celebrate it, to be unapologetic and unique and special, to surround, excuse me, to be unapologetic, unique and special, to make sure that we cultivate and an awareness of our emotions and just acknowledging the world that we exist in. And so that way we can start to heal and care for each other. And then last, but definitely not least, surround yourself with love and surround yourself with the support you need to make sure that you are being honored and your voice is being lifted and acknowledged. All right, you guys, be well.